The tourism to North Korea has reportedly increased dramatically in the last few years, and I feel really, really guilty for that, and I'm very sorry. Let me give you a bit of a background. I come from this tiny European country called Lithuania, which was occupied by the Soviet Union for almost 50 years. The regime collapsed in 1990, four years before I was born, but growing up I was really curious about the lives my parents and grandparents had to lead in the Union, and I really wanted to see it firsthand. So, at the young age of 21, I decided to pay over $2,000 for a week-long trip to North Korea, with the hopes of getting a glimpse of life in a similar surrounding. However, all I ended up seeing as any other tourist was a very well orchestrated show of the cherry picked destinations in the country alongside my well trained local guides without any freedom to explore anything on my own. After the trip, I made two videos about my life in North Korea, both of which went completely viral and got over 10 million views each. My goal was never to encourage North Korean tourism, but since those two videos became some of the most popular videos about North Korea on the internet, I feel like I actually played my part in encouraging more people to go there. And I really hope I can fix that. You see, when I first went to North Korea as a 21 year old, I never really thought about the implications of that trip. However, after my first video went live, a lot of people began asking me whether you know, I felt bad about having gone to North Korea. And at first, um, as most tourists, I guess, I was very defensive of that topic. And, uh, and I kept saying, well, you know, there's so many countries with whose governments I also don't agree with, but that does not mean, you know, I shouldn't travel there, right? Um, so I said, yes, of course, the North Korean government is certainly not the best, but should that mean I shouldn't go there? And I was sort of happy with, with that answer, as once again, most tourists seem to be these days. However, as time went by, I understood that my comparison was was totally wrong because traveling to North Korea is a fundamentally different thing. I'll give you an example. Let's say there's a country with whose government you do not really agree with and you go there as a tourist. So traveling around that country, you obviously spend money in, in, in a lot of different places and obviously a tiny portion of that probably makes its way to the government, but most of the money ends up in the pockets of the local people. But the difference here is that North Korea has such a tight grip on literally the whole society that it's absolutely uncomparable to any country in the world. My one week long tour to North Korea cost me 2000 US dollars and that did not include uh, you know the souvenirs that I bought and some of the some of the interactions that weren't included in my package and stuff. So as a result, I ended up spending quite a bit more than $2,000 for one week. You know how much of that money ended up in the pockets of the local people? Probably none. Some of it went to the agencies that are organizing tours to North Korea and probably most of it ended up directly in the government. And then the question of course is, so what does you know the government do with the money? The United Nations says that the North Korean citizens live under systematic, widespread and gross human rights violations. Here are just a few of them. One, the state controls everything and actively spies on its citizens using a vast surveillance and informer network. Two, North Korea's media is arguably the most tightly controlled in the world. North Korean citizens get all their news, entertainment, and information from state media and citizens can be sent to prison for viewing, reading, or listening to content provided by international media outlets. 3. There is no freedom of religion. Everyone is indoctrinated to treat the Kim family almost as something to worship. 4. According to a report by the US State Department, there are between 80,000 and 120,000 people in prison in the North. People can be jailed for almost anything, with crimes ranging from watching a South Korean DVD to trying to defect. 5. A significant majority of North Koreans undertake unpaid labor at some point in their lives, according to a report by the Human Rights Watch. Despite these issues, there's still a lot of people that actually end up going to North Korea as I did as well. Uh, because North Korea is, is, is probably the most secretive country in the world, the exact tourist data is impossible to get, but the estimates range from tens of thousands to even hundreds of thousands of tourists visiting North Korea every single year. I know it's very ironic for me to say this because I've been there myself, but please, before going to North Korea, think twice. If you still do not think there's there's something fundamentally wrong with, with the North Korean regime and you know you're considering going there. I want to show you a very short excerpt from my from my last North Korea video where I'm comparing my life in, in the North and the South about the differences of those two countries. Take a look. 
Every single day that I spent in South Korea, I couldn't stop thinking about how weird it was that even though just a few dozen years ago the Korean people lived in the same country under the same conditions, these days they were leading such dramatically different lifestyles. I kept asking myself why the people in the North needed special permits to travel in their own country and going abroad was completely impossible, while people in the South could freely go to any place they wished both inside and outside their country. Why was the whole power in the North concentrated in one person's hands who was considered to be a god? Whereas in the South, people had the power to elect their own leaders and dismiss them if they didn't do a good job. And why were the people in the North not allowed to freely interact and share their thoughts with me, while the people in the South could do whatever the heck they wanted? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seeing these differences firsthand broke my heart. Why has life become so different for the Korean people in just a few generations? If this excerpt or all the things I've, I've said in this video thus far still do not convince you that maybe going to North Korea isn't really the best idea ever, I want to tell you a one man's story that had a very, very very big impact on me. As you probably know, there are literally thousands of people that have actually escaped North Korea and created you know, new lives for themselves in either South Korea or quite a few other countries around the world. And obviously some of them have written these absolutely incredible books that are just absolute eye-openers and you know, very, very hard to believe. I've linked to my three favorite books about North Korea in the description box down below. But right now I want to very briefly tell you about the best book about a North Korean refugee I've read in my entire life that is called Escape from Camp 14. Dong Hyuk Shin is the only known person to have been born and raised in a North Korean labor camp because his family was imprisoned there for three generations for a supposed political crime by someone in his family that was done many years ago. As you can imagine, Shin's childhood in the labor camp was incredibly hard. He had to work day in and day out in ruthless conditions and food was so scarce that he was basically starving all the time. Many years later, he risked his life to escape from the camp. Having faced many dangers on the way, he ultimately managed to run away to China where he had to work on various farms in the countryside. Years later, he was lucky enough to finally make his way to South Korea where he lived to tell his story to millions of people around the world. Now, you know, reading a, a, a book that's a New York Times bestseller about this, you know, really famous person is obviously one thing. It, you might think it's true or not true, uh, and it might impact you or not, but you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty different thing. But actually meeting that person in real life and getting to talk to him, you know, one-on-one -on -one and, and actually hear his story is, is a completely different thing. I really wish a lot more people actually, you know, managed to have these experiences where they could actually meet one of the North Korean refugees, whether Shin or, you know, the thousands of other people and could actually hear their stories, you know, in, in real life. And then, you know, a, a question of whether you should go to North Korea and spend money supporting that regime becomes so much more real. That's that's pretty much all I wanted to say today. And, and I know that I'm probably putting myself at risk for doing this video, but I really do think that is the right thing to do. If you're thinking of visiting North Korea yourself, please think about the potential negative implications of your trip. Because traveling in North Korea is, is a fundamentally different thing from any country in the world. Because most of the money you pay there goes directly to the government, with which apparently they can do pretty much anything they desire. Thank you very much for watching the whole video. Uh, it really means so much to me that you also care about this topic. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comment section down below. And if you want to help me spread the word, share this video with the hashtag WhyNorthKorea and, uh, and tell your friends about it. Thank you, have a wonderful day and hopefully we can make the world a bit of a better place together. Thank you so much, see you later.